Hey guys, how's it going? It is my different username here, and today we have a wonderful special to present. And starting off, I figured we could go off on the launcher that defined a whole generation, and was so unique in its prime that over time, it eventually ended up becoming one of the most devastating weapons to use in video games by noobs all over the globe, tubing just about anyone around corners for many years to come. And with that, here we have the M79 Grenade Launcher made out of Lego. So, the M79, or what's also known as the Blooper, the Thumper, or even the Noob Tube, and many other names as this became pretty iconic the moment it came into fruition. It first started in and around 1953 where the Springfield Armory Company was granted by the US Army to begin work on their newest experimental trial called Project Nimblick, referring to an old golf club at the time called Nimblick, in which the US Army was attempting to increase firepower for a single infantry man by the use of an explosive projectile that could reach further ranges than that of the rifle grenades used back from World War II. They were pretty scientific about this as well and essentially stuck golf balls inside of a tube and spring and launched them into the air. The dude perfect of the past if you ask me. And what it essentially came down to was that it was a golf ball that led up to the development of the 40mm grenade and then the grenade led up to the invention of the M79 launcher. Also, I kinda sorta uh, stole this Lego golf ball from Nick Brick at Brickworld, but I'm sure it's okay, just no one tell him, okay? I, I don't want him to know about it, and I, I did this for you guys so we could learn about balls and grenades and such, you know, normal stuff. 289 to the front. Oh, oh, he's knocked that guy out. Uh -oh. oh, right on the uh, head. It was Nick. <clears throat> anyway. The M79 was soon adopted in 1960 and then was eventually delivered out to the US Army in 1961 where they had manufactured up to 350,000 grenade launchers. And it didn't take long for the weapon to see combat but was ultimately an immediate success. It didn't even take much time for the soldiers to overly favor the utility of the launcher and you could even find these things chopped up too just to make them all that more portable. What's even more surprising is that even though these were technically replaced by the M203 eventually, these are still being used to this very day by very few select units, but it goes to show how reliable and easy this system really was to use. And before we get more into the details of how this was built, I want to take a brief moment and talk about today's sponsor. Thank you very much. So, grenade launchers. They're pretty awesome, and they can protect you from a lot of things, but they won't protect you from cyber attacks, and they won't protect you from malicious websites collecting your data without your information. So that's why today's video is sponsored by NordVPN. So little to no long ago, I didn't really have a VPN until I realized how awesome it was to actually have one. It's great to actually send your internet to other places all around the world while still being privately secured under encrypted servers. So whenever I go online and shop for some Lego on those shifty Lego websites, now I know that my data won't be taken away by who knows who. And if you want secured internet protection too, you can actually go over to my link, which is available in the description or right here on screen, which is nordvpn.com slash my different username. Not only do you get a deal on your own VPN if you click on that link, but you actually help support creators just like me. So yeah, thank you to NordVPN for sponsoring today's video and let's get right back into it. All right, so starting off, we got the trigger, which is pretty typical, and the guard as well, which is actually not so much typical, and can swing itself out of the way of both ends, and can even lock into these three different positions, left, middle, and right. And this was made in order to make use of gloves more effective with this launcher type. And this was more than likely added to factor in the winter warfare that was experienced when the Korean War took place. The one thing that always catches people's eyes is the stock, which definitely has an irregular shape to it, but it is for a real purpose, and it naturally slopes to adjust for the angling of the projectile that you are launching out of the barrel. It even has a four stud long rubber padding in the back, and another detail that we will talk more about later on. The safety switch here is mainly for show and doesn't actually affect the trigger in any way, but is pretty similar to how I built the safety switch from the Mossberg where it at least simulates the function. Moving up this piece puts the weapon into fire and down for safety. This lever piece here is vital to the entire system, 
Right now it is holding down this upward beam and once the lever is either swiveled left side or right, it will open the breech area of the barrel. And this here is the break action portion of the weapon system. It uses this in order to cock back the hammer for fire every time while loading and here we can even see the firing pin up against the wall. And personally I wanted to make the whole receiver area in dark blay to help contrast a little bit against the smooth barrel of the launcher up front. I think the whole thing looks really nice. It's not perfect as it can actually start to crack with enough force being thrown at it, but it still holds a significant amount of weight even while regarding this design. And chambering itself is as easy as 1, 2, and 3. Okay, I know that may have been a little fast for you guys, so let's actually just take a moment to talk about this grenade here instead. Here, we actually have our newly revised M433 HEDP. Here's how the old one looked, if you remember from my old M16 video. It's the dual purpose high explosive round, it has been around since 1971, and can only explode after being spun from the rifling of a barrel, and that can only occur with at least 30 yards of distance away from the original shooter. Meaning you could also just punt people with this thing at close range without the fear of needlessly blowing yourself or friends up in the process. The wooden grip up front may be a little fatter than necessary, but it is okay. I really actually was only able to use the parts I had on hand so that I could actually bring this to Brickworld in time. But this does contain another feature, which makes this launcher just so awesome. At least for me, I think. So, these sling mounts here, one in the front and one in the back, aren't just meant for looks. Oh no siree. These as well can take our trusty Lego sling out and, oh, would you look at that? It's holding it just fine. <laughs> Uh, yep, just fine. You betrayed me, Lego. So, maybe it's best not to add a lot of tension to the sling. I I'm not sure, but either way, it actually does look really fantastic and kind of fits the mood of the build overall. Moving up more, we could see the barrel, which is made super smooth and runs at about 14.5 inches in length. It very much can have an entire 40mm round fit in through the back and even fly out through the front. But we do have a few things up top that are a lot more important to talk about, and these right here are our iron sights. The sights are just like regular sights you would find on something similar to an M1, except for the rear sights, which are maybe a little different. And these are elevated to help sight in the hundreds of meters for the launcher in which the grenades can actually be projected. And they can start from 100 meters on both parts of the leaf sight and reach up to 375 yards in real life, but on my version, can only adjust to about 250 it seems. It's only because of the angled Lego piece up top that it doesn't actually go any further, but the look for this is still very much complete, which is all that really matters. Also, as much fun as this is, I still wanted to be able to convert this to really any other version of the same system that I wanted, and there are several different types of versions for this weapon that I have seen over the years, but I really didn't want to just make one dedicated model. So. Right here to start off, we actually have the Far Cry version of the M79. Right here is what the M79 looks like from Far Cry 4, 5, and there's probably going to be other versions of it later on in future titles. And this is a more cut down version with the stock and front sight completely removed and rear sights pushed back just a bit. Fun fact is even though that these sights are pushed down, they immediately push up the moment you aim in using evil magic or something because I don't know how the character is actually able to do such a thing in game. But for me, it only takes a little bit of a simple trick to get the same effect going. But I'd say it would definitely be a lot easier to just point the thing and fire without worrying about the sight flipping up every time. The next addition is what I'd like to personally call the Pirate Cannon, and this version is even smaller than the other, so small that the sights are now removed altogether. With this cut down, the barrel length is now at about 6 inches, and it even looks like Pyro's flare gun from Team Fortress 2. But now, it's a lot harder to open because of the rubber band system inside that really was meant to complement the longer barrel and all the weight incorporated with it. But man, imagine getting yeeted by this thing. Woo! And it's not even limited to those versions as well. You could have a version of just the short barrel with the wooden stock, as well as the long barrel with a stubby grip. And there's really no limit to how much you could actually create with the M79. So, 
In conclusion, the M79 is a very useful tool for soldiers advancing upon checkpoints or just as a clearing tool. It's very useful for how little it really was. But even the M79 wasn't good enough for some people, and shots in between were always the biggest downside of the system overall. So, to advance on something already amazing, we took developments of the past and brought them here to get this. Here we have the China Lake pump action grenade launcher made fully out of lego so you guys are probably already wondering why just why would you build something like this when you already had built the nuke tube and well i just didn't think it would be enough content from just one launcher to make the entire video so instead i just had to make an entire thing celebrating grenade launchers in general also the pump action ones too which is just awesome. And to kick off this special, we could start off with a little bit of history of this weapon. So, the China Lake, or what's mistakenly referred to a lot as the EX-41, when in reality, this is actually an EX-41. This is solely named the China Lake. And back in 1967, it was up to the Naval Air Weapon Station and Alfred Kermode to design and manufacture this weapon. And this would end up only serving combat for about a year in Vietnam and it was brought through by the Navy SEALs during the time. But since then, the weapon really just fizzled away and there's not much documentation on it any further than that. I think some of the SEALs got to keep their launchers after the conflict as well as even giving them away to some of their friends. What an amazing Christmas gift to get, honestly. And to start off, we have the trigger down below all of this, and it is about as responsive as the other one. And the guard here can swing around somewhat, just like the M79 too, but it can only lock into one position, which, personally, I actually prefer this over the other design, but then again, this does lack more on the technical aspect. The stock isn't anything insane like the Thumper. In fact, this stock was just modeled somewhat off of a Remington Model 870, but still incorporates the fat grip that you see in the front. It even has this rubber back piece, which goes about to the black line here, and the back piece was made into the same color as the rest of the stock, which gives it its unique look. And this also contains no sling mounts, which, considering what happened before, that's probably a good thing, let's be honest here. The safety switch also shares the same story, and doesn't affect the trigger in the slightest, but at least this was made to have official markings for the modes, which includes S for safe and F for fart. Wait a second. Hold on. Uh, no, oh, F for fire. Sorry guys. I might need to hire a new script guy, but anyway. The pump action feature is definitely superior in firepower versus having to reload every shot, and gotta say, it's super fun to run. One heck of a sound, isn't it? And the bolt cover is another interesting feature, because it shows more on how the 40mm grenades can even cycle in such a small receiver like this. And in reality, the bolt actually has a cover piece that slides over the rest of the other part, essentially keeping the entire weapon all sealed up, and it is actually when it slides over that is how it's able to fit in such a small area. And chambering grenades is just butter smooth. I mean, just look at this. It was an aspect of this weapon that had to be mastered because if most of the shells being loaded in were causing issue after issue, it would just be a complete disaster. What's neat too is because of the pump bars below, an elevator actually can't bring the shells up through it, but there is actually no need for that because through using this method alone, I could just mimic the effect of shooting and rechambering the next round over and over again just by simply reusing the same original round repeatedly. But even with these factors here, the shell isn't just locked into place and actually can still eject as well. It just needs a little bit of motivation and twisting around, but it's all good. And speaking of these pump bars, they are set apart at about 5 studs in width and move inside of this receiver area, which is set at about 6 studs. And basically how I was able to actually pull this off was considering the same method here that I actually had originally done for the Mossberg, but just did it on a bigger scale. And the barrel and magazine tube look pretty similar as well to one another, but in reality, this portion of the tube had to be somewhat thinned out just to make exception for the size of the pump itself. And just like the shotgun curse that we had before, where we couldn't fit a 12 gauge shell within that model, we actually can't fit our 40 millimeter grenade, unfortunately. And admittedly, I think that would be pretty difficult to pull off too. But who knows, maybe someday we'll actually be able to load and maybe even cycle shells, but who knows when that will be. 
And up top, the sights are just like the regular sights from before, except this time, the front sight has a cover as well, which I purposely made to not be built within the snot technique, so that it actually stands out more against the smooth barrel. And this was made in accommodation for the folding rear sights in real life, obviously because those are made out of metal, but these... Uh, I don't think Lego sites are going to be having a problem anytime soon. And believe it or not, but this technically has a little bit of conversion process as well. But it is very minimal. There's not really much you can actually do with this, just given how it's actually made. So, here we have the option to remove the stock entirely and add in place this little nubby piece instead. Which really brings out that super shorty look, if you ask me. This looks like it would be a shotgun that Hellboy would use. And I gotta say, I think I have a new favorite in my list. So, in conclusion... The China Lake Pump Action Grenade Launcher is a really cool concept that, given a lot of difficulties here and there, actually pulled through, and I feel like it's deserving of more reputation than it will probably ever get. It was a very short-lived system, but from what it sounds like, it seems to have been successful. Granted, given its complicated hand-building necessary, apparently they've only made around 20 or so of these things, with a few more later reproduction models made out there too. Airtronic in 2009 even came in with a prototype of a modern take of the China Lake, but they ended up scrapping that project after legal issues ensued and the pressing knowledge that Milcor was coming in hot with their new M32 model at the time. But we're not quite done yet. We are done showcasing the launchers of course, but I also wanted to truly make this a grenade launcher special, if you know what I mean. And how could it be that without having a little bit of variety to play with? So yeah, I went around to try to find all the different types of 40mm grenades available for these systems, and I came up with this. Starting off, we have these M781 chalk rounds used mainly for training purposes, and these help with aligning the zeroing of the sights in launchers without the need of wasting so much high explosive ammo just to set up the launcher. With the M79, it's pretty fun to just pluck it in and shoot around, and with the China Lake, this would be good to use to practice your grouping patterns with. Up next is the M576 MP Apers 40mm cartridge, used mainly for CQB given the buckshot cartridge filled inside with 20-24 grain pellets and this was made in the late 60s for more utility when it comes to navigating through cities or even brush with your launcher equipped too. This was basically implemented around the same time that the M79 was around, and this was practically one of the most real uses here. With the China Lake, I'm essentially memeing at this point, because not only does it not even properly chamber, given the shell shape and everything, but because of how small the shell actually is in length, it wouldn't even be able to cycle these within the magazine tube. Here we have the 40mm to 12 gauge conversion, for essentially the same effect as the MP Apers round, but is a lot more of a modern conversion style of shell. For the M79, this essentially serves the same purpose as the last shell, but when it comes to the China Lake, I kind of forgot to mention one thing. Like, yeah, it can chamber this no problem, but what I didn't mention earlier is that, sure, this can't feed 40mm shells, but it actually does have a smaller opening present, and this can fit 12 gauge shells within the tube itself. So, in probably the worst way ever, I had just made a shotgun that can both chamber and load. So, I finally did it, right? Well, no, I this this is an abomination. So, we're going to move on. I think that is everything to do with the grenade launchers and our whole special altogether. I will say this though, even though I had made this all into just one video, I am still going to make each of the launchers have their own individual file for my Etsy store down below in the description. And a side note I feel to mention, it is unfortunate to say, but LEGO Digital Designer is now, for a fact, unable to be downloaded anymore. Believe it or not, you actually could have downloaded it before, but besides that... <sighs> It's very sad. So, if you have the program still, that's awesome. Celebrate. I mean, really, don't ever delete it. But, I will still say, I am going to provide my own LDD instructions to you guys regardless. But, these files will, for now on, be I.O. files only available for Studio. So, with all that said, be sure to subscribe to see more LEGO creations made later in the future. Like, favorite, and comment if you have enjoyed. And, as always... 
Thank you guys for watching, thank you to NordVPN for sponsoring, and have a happy Independence Day and a wonderful 4th of July.